Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 26 RC, or Release Candidate. iOS 26 RC released to developers and public beta testers on all iOS 26 supported devices. Now iOS 26 RC is the final version released to developers and public beta testers unless there's additional bugs and issues they need to fix before it's released. If that's the case, we'll see an RC2 or we'll have an iOS 26 with a different build number when it releases to the public, and we have the final release date we'll talk about a little bit later. Now this came in at 8.39 gigabytes on my iPhone 16 Pro Max, was about the same size on the other devices here, and along with this Apple also released a many different updates iPad OS 26 RC, Mac OS 26 RC, TV OS and HomePod OS 26 RC, Vision OS 26 RC, Watch OS 26 RC, along with older updates such as iOS 18.7 RC and older Mac updates as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 23A340. Now, if there's no additional issues or if Apple decides to push this one to the public, this would be the final version. However, they could change the build number before it's released and then we'd all have a second update to install once it releases to the public. Now this update does not have a modem update coming from beta 9 or beta 8, so no change there. But the first thing I was greeted with as far as new features and changes is a brand new hello screen that looks great. It's fully animated as you go through a few settings, including Wi-Fi, which I thought was odd, and then it brings me to my home screen. My phone was extremely hot, we'll talk about that in a moment, but it was extremely hot so you can see some of the animation was a little bit slow. Now the first thing that's new has to do with the wallpaper. Now under display and brightness, we have the old wallpaper. However, on the iPad side, Apple has already updated it. So if we go into our settings under display here, display and brightness, you'll see the iOS and iPadOS 26 wallpaper. Why they haven't updated it on the iPhone side yet, I'm not sure. Maybe we'll have to wait until iOS 26.1, but for some reason they haven't updated that yet here. We have a new feature that Apple introduced with the iPhone 17 lineup where we have the new Apple watches and a new health feature. If we go into health, if we go into the health app, you'll see I have a sleep score here, but I don't really have anything filled out. However, we have a new graph that looks really nice. And thanks to Tom for sending this in, you can see what it looks like if you're using your Apple watch for sleep and you have a sleep score. So that's something that's a little bit new. And also Apple announced a new hypertension measurement that measures your blood pressure or tries to notice changes in it over time and then alerts you if maybe you have hypertension. This is something that's coming to the new Apple Watch Series 11, Apple Watch Ultra 3, but they're also introducing this to older devices as well. So Apple Watch Series 9 and later and Apple Watch Ultra 2 and later will get this feature. And you can see it here. If you search for hypertension, we actually have the option here. So hypertension notifications, and it goes into more detail about it. So you can learn about it. It's a condition that can cause damage to your heart, blood vessels, and other organs. Apple Watch can check your heart data and notify you when it detects a pattern that could indicate hypertension. You can manage hypertension notifications and heart settings in the Apple Watch app. So that's something that's coming to older devices. My Apple Watch update is still installing. It's not updated yet on my Apple Watch yet. On the home screen, we have a new option here. If we go to edit and then customize, within customize, go to tinted, you'll see we have a new icon that represents maybe a case or something along those lines. Maybe it will sense some new cases. I have a black case here that this is for the iPhone 16 Pro Max and it's an Apple case, an official one. So let's go ahead and put it on here. It should recognize it. Let's see if we can get that to recognize here. So we'll try this one more time, see if it recognizes it. There we go. It recognized it's the black case. And then if we go home here, you'll see that it automatically tinted the icons to match the case. So this is something that's new that it can understand based off of the NFC in the back with the new Apple cases. So that's something that seems to be new that's in this update. And if you're using tinted icons, it works fine. There's also some odd issues here and there we'll come back to with this, but it looks like that's a nice new option. Again, if you get some of those new color options for the cases, of course, then it would update. So try that out and see if it's working for you. Also, one thing I noticed is if I go into Apple Music, I think the liquid glass here is a little bit more transparent. So you'll see, let me switch to light mode on this phone. On the left, I have beta nine. On the right, I have the RC. So we were on the exact same screen and you'll see that it looks a little bit more transparent to me. It may be 
sort of slight, but in certain areas, I noticed it right away when scrolling, depending on which icon or which song you're on, it seemed to be a little bit better. Also, if I go into search, you'll see that it has the home icon. And then sometimes when I go back, go back out, if I go to home, go back to search, sometimes the switches back and forth to the icon that we have for library. So depending on what you were on last, it will show that particular icon. It's something new that I didn't notice in previous updates. It isn't new, but it's something new that I noticed. Let's go back to dark mode. And another thing they've updated has to do with the Apple watch app. If we go into the watch app, you'll see here, go to the face gallery. We have the new watch faces that they introduced for the new series 11 Apple watch ultra three, as well as the new S E three. If we go into it, you can see this here with waypoint. We have flow exactograph. So these are all new. You'll see these different styles. They're available now. Let's see if we can send it, even though I haven't updated my watch yet. So we'll go ahead and add, see if it comes over to here. And it looks like it may not be on this update yet. So I'll try that out maybe a little bit later. Let me know if you want an iOS or watchOS 26 RC video as well, but it's still updating and it's a fairly large update at around 800 megabytes or so. One other thing I noticed is the dock is still fairly large. So around the icons here, you can see they're quite large. Just in general, it's a pretty large dock overall. And some have suggested that it has to do with the large icons, but I'm not using the larger icons. So I'm not sure why it's showing that. Also, I've noticed this update is super smooth overall. So things such as unlocking, swiping back and forth, once it actually finished updating and then sort of cooled down a little bit, it seemed much faster than it was before. Scrolling through things such as Mercury Weather here, and this is their new updated one that I'm testing out with liquid glass. It looks great, but you can see what it looks like there. Everything seems to be smooth at this point. Of course, it may take a few days to know what that's like, and we'll talk about that in the weekend follow-up video. Now there's a live translation feature Apple showed off today. It's something we've been long suspecting will be coming to iOS 26, where you can use your AirPods and translate live. Apple showed off AirPods Pro 3 today and showed that they'll have this feature, but some great news is the support also trickles down to AirPods 4, AirPods 4 with active noise cancellation, and AirPods 2. Now I'm not seeing the option yet, but there'll probably be a firmware update we'll have to install. Hopefully they'll push an RC version before it's released to the public. But if we go into settings, we're connected here. Sometimes it doesn't work right, but we're connected. And if we go in here, I haven't seen it yet and I'm still on the previous update. So once these update, hopefully we'll have that option for live translation and we can try it out. As far as anything else, well, there was a splash screen when I went into journal for the first time, you can see it here where it says now on iPad and Mac, keep multiple journals, create richer entries and more. I also had another splash screen in the fitness app. So if we go into fitness, you'll see here, it says workouts on iPhone, music and media, fitness plus ready-made plans. So those are all new. That's something that popped up. I went through every Apple app and that's all I had that showed up. This update also adds support for Powerbeats Fit, according to Aaron P613 on X, so he found that. And there's still some visual issues. So if we go into maybe edit here, so let's try that again. We'll go into edit, customize, clear. We'll use the clear icons, which look okay, but they're not great. If we go over into maybe this area here, you'll see we have a new clear icon for invites. So it's updating that way. But overall, I was finding that when I was trying this out earlier, showing you the new case tint backgrounds that we have, I went back and forth to clear, went to tinted, went back and some of my icons disappeared. So sometimes there's some visual glitches you may have seen right there. There's some odd bugs here and there that still seem like Apple needs to refine this a little bit more. As far as other issues, well, some have reported that swiping back and forth sometimes doesn't fill in the corners properly. I've only seen that in screen recordings, but it works okay here. And then the Wi-Fi toggle still hasn't been updated. So if we go back, we'll go into Wi-Fi. And if we just turn off Wi-Fi, it just jumps and turns off. It's not smooth with, with liquid glass like some of the others. So maybe VPN you'll see there has a smooth liquid glass look to it. So that's something that definitely needs to be updated. As far as other bugs and bug fixes, well, if we go into Apple's public facing release notes, I went through this and it looks like we have 53 categories of resolved issues. That's compared to 52 in beta nine and 37 categories of known issues compared to 39 in beta nine. So still some known issues here. You can scroll through this. If you're having issues, make sure it's not listed here and you can still report it in feedback if you feel it's not fixed but you'll see the camera was resolved with, in some cases, the mode selection picker remains expanded after launch. They fixed that, but there's still a known issue with camera sharing a photo immediately after capture might take longer than expected.
They've resolved some issues for Apple CarPlay, so hopefully that's fixed. And then there's other things throughout. So lots of updates here, but again, more to go over, see if they've fixed, and we'll talk about that in the weekend follow-up video. As far as other releases, well, one thing I didn't really catch during the presentation today, you can see on Apple Newsroom, is that there's a new version of Final Cut Camera. While we knew we were getting some new features, we get ProRes RAW and some other features as well with G-Lock, things like that. And those are things I wasn't really expecting to need a new app for, but it looks like they're updating that. Of course, they introduced AirPods Pro 3, Apple Watch SE 3, Apple Watch Series 11, Apple Watch Ultra 3, iPhone 17, and all of them this time around have 120 hertz ProMotion displays. They even called it ProMotion on the iPhone 17 and 17 Air. So I think this time around, these should be some pretty great phones and the color is more orange than we actually expected. So we have an orange, we also have a blue, and then a silver. So overall, I think it's a great lineup this year. Of course, I'll cover that in depth once I get my hands on them and share that with you. As far as releases, while well, Apple has given us an official release date for iOS 26, it's what many of us thought, but if we go to apple.com, go to the option in the upper right, go to iPhone, scroll down, go to iOS 26, you'll see it's available on September 15th. That's when it releases to the public, whether it's ready or not. So we'll see that probably along with Mac OS 26 Tahoe and other updates as well. You can see that here, again, available 9.15, iPad OS, Watch OS, all releasing, next Monday. So of course I'll have videos on that. We'll talk about whether or not it's ready in the weekend follow-up. Of course, we also expect iOS 18.7 to release on that day. And then maybe a day or so after possibly iOS 26.1 beta one, we should expect some new features with that, but maybe they'll wait another week for that. We don't really know. Of course, iPhone 17 pre-orders start this Friday on the 12th typically around 8 a.m. Eastern time, we'll be able to order that, and then they release to the public on the 19th. So, of course, as soon as I get my hands on them, I'll have unboxings, comparisons, and more. Of course, Apple released the new iPhone 17 Pro models in orange, blue, and silver, like I mentioned before, the iPhone Air, and the regular iPhone 17, all pretty decent this time around. So let me know if you're picking one up, what color, which version. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And if you use an eSIM with the Pro models, you actually get a little bit more power or battery. So that's great to see. Same with iPhone 17. It seems like we're going to have great lineups this year as far as the iPhones go. If you're wondering if you should now install iOS 26 RC, well, if you're on iOS 26 already, definitely go ahead and install it. However, if you're on iOS 18.6.2 and you want to try it out, now would be the time as it should be close to a final release. You still have time to roll back, but you'll need a computer to do that. Just make sure you make a backup ahead of time. As far as overall performance, well, generally it's pretty good. After my phone cooled down, it was quite hot early on. Things like ProMotion seem nice and smooth, and the overall experience is very fast. Some people don't like the animations. I find it very smooth overall. You'll see it's smooth and fast at the same time, and this is on a 16 Pro Max. As far as the overall heat, well, like I mentioned before, it was quite hot right after installing it, completely normal after installing a major update, and of course it takes a little time to settle. Let's go ahead and take a look at battery. If we take a look at battery, battery health, I'm at 94% maximum capacity and then 322 cycles. So sticking around 94% for me for a year of use. As far as usage, well, it hasn't been great, but that's typical for me on betas anyway. I had yesterday, three hours and 10 minutes of screen active time, eight hours and 48 minutes of screen idle time and used 88% of my battery. So not really that great. The day before, two hours and three minutes of screen active time and used 44%. So I would expect this to improve. Of course, we'll measure this throughout the week and talk about it in the weekend follow-up video. When it comes to storage, let's quickly take a look here. We'll go to general iPhone storage. We'll do the same on beta nine here on the 15 Pro Max. And if we scroll down, you'll see that we're taking up 19.98 gigabytes, just under what we had previously. So 6.27 gigabytes for Apple intelligence, 13.71 gigabytes for iOS and 19.98 total compared to 20.72. So that's an improvement there. As far as overall benchmarks, I ran them twice. Of course, it was quite warm when I did that, but overall pretty decent scores for the second time running it. I had 3,388 for single core, 8,355 for multi-core. I would expect this to increase a little bit as things finish processing in the background. And of course, again, we'll check that in the weekend follow-up video.
So that's everything with iOS 26 RC. I can't believe we're already at this point in the year. We have less than a week left until it releases to the public. Let me know if you're picking up an iPhone, like I mentioned before. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.